A 1 kg rubber ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters with negligible air resistance. If the ball's rebound speed immediately after hitting the ground is 8.95 meters per second, how much thermal energy was generated as a result of the collision? Okay, let's start off with a picture. I'll depict the ground as a horizontal line. The ground will also be where I place my x-axis. The ball is falling from a particular height, so I will make my y-axis perpendicular to the ground. I'll depict the ground starting off at height h naught. So I will define h naught to be equal to 10.0 meters. The ball's mass is given as 1.00 kilograms. The ball falls, hits the ground, and rebounds. So I am going to draw the ball hitting the ground. And let's say we can look at this in slow motion. If we can actually see this rubber ball hit the ground, we would see that as it's in collision with the ground, the normal force that it exchanges with the ground causes a deformation in the shape of the ball. So the ball will slightly flatten out as the ground and its shape absorbs a lot of that, um, a lot of that energy of collision. And then in deforming it, thermal energy is going to be generated. So that's why I kind of drew the ball when it hits the ground deformed. So we want to find the ball's, or actually we're given the ball's speed initially after hitting the ground is 8.95 meters per second. Well, let's go ahead and, and indicate that. So the ball's final speed, and we will say the final speed is 8.95 meters per second. And we might as well indicate the ball's initial speed when it was initially dropped. So the initial speed, it's dropped from rest. So that'll be zero meters per second. Our goal is to find out how much thermal energy was generated as a result of the collision. And that thermal energy will actually be the energy that goes into deforming the ball. So let's write, since we're Dealing with energy, I am going to express conservation of energy. And I'm going to say conservation of energy says that the change of macroscopic potential and kinetic energy plus the change of internal energy is equal to zero. Now remember, the change of kinetic and potential energy that's just what we call mechanical energy. So expanding conservation of energy out, we have the change of kinetic plus the change of potential. Now remember, internal energy is comprised of thermal energy plus chemical potential energy plus nuclear potential energy. And that's all equal to zero. I'm going to move this velocity out of the way. So let's expand this out. Or actually, let's look at what we can neglect. So ne let's neglect changes in nuclear potential energy and changes in chemical potential energy. The final macroscopic kinetic energy minus the initial macroscopic kinetic energy plus the final macroscopic potential energy minus the initial macroscopic potential energy plus the change of thermal energy is equal to zero. So the change of thermal energy is then equal to minus the change of the macroscopic kinetic and potential energies. 
So the change of thermal energy is equal to minus one half the ball's mass times its speed upon hitting the ground minus one half the ball's mass times its initial speed that it fell plus the final gravitational potential energy of the ball immediately after hitting the ground and the initial gravitational potential energy of the ball after um, when it was first released from rest. Since the ball was released from rest its initial speed was zero which means its initial kinetic energy was zero. Immediately after the ball collides with the ground, its height is zero, which means its final gravitational potential energy is zero. So what we have here is minus one half the mass of the ball times its final speed squared minus a minus, which is a plus, the initial gravitational potential energy. Now if you look at this, this is just a change in the macroscopic energy of the system. So in other words, the initial potential energy of the system minus whatever kinetic energy that was lost ends up giving our, us, giving the system, thermal energy. So let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. We have minus one half mass, it's a one kilogram ball. Speed initially after the collision is 8.95 meters per second. Plus the mass of the ball times the free fall acceleration of gravity times the initial height of the ball. When I enter this into my calculator, I get the change of thermal energy is equal to 57.9 joules. So what that means is 57.9 joules of thermal energy are added to the system as a result of deforming the ball upon its collision with the ground.